How will Jupiter and Capricorn speak to you and your sign? Find out at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of December 8, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And it is a very active sky, so there's a lot to talk about here. I'm going to start with what tends to get a lot of attention, which is the full moon. Right around Thursday is when we will have a full moon. However, this is energy we are going to feel all week. As we start the week right out of the gate, the sun will speak in a conversation of tension with Neptune in what astrologers call a square. And then the moon will start to move into alignment directly across the sky from the sun, as it does once every 28 and a half days, that is the full moon. And the full moon will also speak with Neptune as well. And what this does is set up a larger configuration that astrologers call a T-square. Now, sometimes T-squares can work really well because they represent motivation and action. And they also invite us to summon a conviction that our lives can change and they can change for the better based on our own effort. And in this way, I actually think of squares and T-squares for that matter as representing tremendous power that becomes available to us. However, in this case, it is Neptune that is serving as the anchor point to this T-square. And so the energy is a little bit different. This sets up a period of time that can feel, on the one hand, confusing, perhaps disappointing as well and disillusioning. And it can feel as if what it is we're hoping will manifest at this time is ephemeral. It is hard to contain. And at the same time, this energy can have a certain dissipating quality to it. If you think about Neptune, god of the seas, the tides come in, right? So that's the sea, the tides come in, but the tides also go out. And sometimes it's good when they go out, sometimes it's good when they come in, sometimes it's not good when they come in or go out. And what I mean by good is desirable. Well, when we have energy like this, it has that tide going out dissipating quality. And while that can work to our advantage, the fact that this is part of a T-square does say that we may have some mixed feelings about this all. Now, whatever happens, I will say right off the bat, I think that for a lot of people, wherever this full moon falls, uh, there's a sense of a lack of clarity as to what is really going on. And while there may be feelings of disappointment at this time, a lot of that might actually give way to changed circumstances, which is why I do think that with this energy, it's a good idea where possible. Sometimes we don't have a choice and it is what our life is and we have to trust life and the opportunities that present themselves to us. But as a general principle, it's probably a good idea with energy that is so unclear not to make big life changing decisions. What it is that feels confusing or disappointing now could turn around on its own once we get into next week. Next week we have a truly extraordinary alignment taking place between Jupiter and Uranus. And of course, I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. I spoke about it in the Jupiter special horoscopes for each of the signs. And as you may know from last week, um, I was a little bit under the weather, so I'm hoping to get something up on YouTube in the coming days. Thank you for your patience with that where it comes to the Jupiter special horoscope. But yes, that is an amazing alignment that is set to take place at the beginning of next week. And it is that alignment that I ultimately see as bringing a change of circumstances that feels like luck, but also bringing clarity. But clarity can come even before then. We do have energy this week that is about seeing through illusion, sort of cutting through what otherwise would be murky and seeing the core of an issue and what is really going on. Even if that understanding is only an intuitive one, it is still valuable. Where it is that we're relying on information and communication and text messages or letters or documents or contracts, 
that's where the confusion energy ends up being magnified. But where it is that we are listening to our own feelings, looking at the evidence as well, that's where we start welcoming in an energy that is more grounded and also more inspiring as well. So let's talk about some other things that are changing. On the one hand, we're also going to have Mercury changing signs as well. And it is going to be early in the week that Mercury will leave the sign of Scorpio, which is just as big a deal as Mercury entering the sign of Sagittarius. We've had an extended over two months of Mercury moving through the sign of Scorpio as part of the larger Mercury retrograde season. That Mercury retrograde season ended at the very end of last week, but it is now as Mercury changes signs that really it's going to feel for a lot of us out there as if we're ready to focus on something else, focus on a different area, if you will. With Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius, one of the best things about this is, you know, with Mercury and Scorpio, all conversation has like another element to it, whether it is double entendre or whether it just is another uh, meaning, another sense of uh, purpose of sharing. All of that can be sensed with Mercury and Scorpio. Well, with Mercury in Sagittarius, our conversations become a lot more aspirational. They become a lot more big picture. And it's overall just a more expansive energy that focuses more on opportunities. There's a sense of wanting to talk more about philosophical subjects as well. And of course, this is a part of the sky that speaks to politics and religion. And so there may be an increase of conversation on those fronts, especially at this time of year when so many of the world's great religions are celebrating some holiday or another. It can be a powerful time to consider other perspectives. And it is this part of the sky, the sign of Sagittarius that ultimately invites us to be open, more open to the world, more open to ideas than we were before. One of the most important energies that I'm really looking forward to this week has to do with Mars speaking with Neptune. Mars right now in its home sign, the ancient ruling planet of Scorpio, speaking in supreme harmony with Neptune. Now, if you think about it just a moment ago with the full moon and sun and T-square energy, that can have Neptune showing up in our lives in a way that has us focusing more on the confusing or disappointing elements. But Mars speaking in supreme harmony with Neptune in a type of conversation that astrologers call a trine, well, this is positively inspired. This is feeling energized. And I do think that this is energy that feels not only energizing, but part of what energizes us is faith and inspiration and even a sense of magic as well. And I don't say that lightly. There is a sense that things can turn around very quickly and very much to our advantage. There's a sense of happiness visiting us as well as we see through the illusion and we see what's really going on and how to best empower ourselves. Now, of course, everybody's going to go about empowering themselves in different ways with different strategies. But for all that, this is a development. This is a celestial conversation that says we are stronger and more clear in spirit than we realize in the onset of the week. And it takes just a moment, a moment to shift perspective, a moment to try something a little bit different, to connect with someone, to focus in a different way, to change our energy so dramatically so out of uncertainty and towards enthusiasm towards what it is that we can do, that we can experience, that we can build, and towards a sense of the possible, really. And ultimately, what makes what we don't realize into the possible is awareness. And it is a willingness to change and transform ourselves or our circumstances. With Mars in the sign of Scorpio, the change really is within, deep within. It is about us being more starkly honest with ourselves, but this time it unleashes something truly inspired. It unleashes something that lets us know we have more options than we previously realized. 
and what was confusing and what was uncertain, maybe we have to compartmentalize it, let it be uncertain and focus instead on where the power is. Now, I like to say the power is in the present, right? The present is where the power is, is a line I use a lot in my meditations. But at the same time, the power is with ourselves. The power is in self-honesty and being willing to reflect more deeply and decide what we are going to let influence us what we are going to let shape us or what it is that we will no longer allow to have power over us as we move towards creating ourselves more consciously, creating our lives, creating our psyche with greater intention. That is part of the blessing of the Scorpio energy and Mars and Scorpio has been inspiring us to do this very work. Well, Mars and Scorpio speaking in supreme harmony in trine with Neptune, shows us that the rewards are there the spiritual rewards the energetic rewards are there if we will trust the process that reflection takes us on now the other big news this week is venus venus is very active in the sky this week first speaking in harmony with neptune and then meeting saturn in the sky and then towards the end of the week meeting pluto in the sky now, either one of these meetings, Venus and Saturn, Venus and Pluto, either one of them would get a lot of attention because this is energy that has a certain strength to it. It has uh, connotations of karma and limitation and intensity and fate. But with a week like this, with so much heightened energy and yet so much uncertain energy, it does suggest an interesting week where in some areas we are being asked to be more grounded and where we are not, we are brought to earth. And at the same time, we are being asked to have faith and to let that guide our actions. So let's talk about Venus, okay? Venus right now is in the sign of Capricorn and recently Jupiter moved into this part of the sky. And I do feel like for a lot of us out there, this is giving us a little bit of a preview of what's coming up for us ahead, especially in 2020, as Jupiter starts tracing these very steps that Venus is taking now and for the next week. So Venus meeting Neptune, that's just nice, okay? That's nice, it's beautiful, it's beautifying, and it's a sense of ease and joy and pleasure that can be there, especially where it comes to musical and artistic pursuits and spiritual pursuits as well. But it is Venus meeting Saturn that is about reality. It's a reality check of one kind or another. It's about looking at things beyond the illusion beyond the frivolous, beyond the superficial, and instead understanding what lies at the foundation of it. And for some of us, this is going to be reality checks in the context of love for others, in the context of money, and for others still in the context of other ways in which we might indulge ourselves. There are healthy ways and a healthy balance that ultimately is there, and it is Saturn now that is going to remind us to find that healthy balance. So if we are someone who denies ourselves a lot of the pleasures of the earthly incarnation, it is going to be Saturn meeting Venus that encourages us to find balance, to find ways in which to enjoy our journey as we move through life. But if it is that we have overindulged or we've been focusing too much on earthly pleasures, well, it is going to be this energy that asks us to have some restraint, to have some healthy sense of limitation. That way we get to enjoy what it is that we do participate in that much more. But this is also a reality check where it comes to another person. This is Venus after all. This has to do with relating, with interacting with other people. In the sign of Capricorn, there is a sense of power here as well. And what power balances or imbalances allow us to do and what they don't allow us to do. But it is Venus meeting Pluto that takes the energy to a much more intense place. It becomes about feeling a sense of a pull in a particular direction, a sense of 
fate in a particular direction as well. And chances are a lot of people out there are going to be feeling the intensity as we move into the second half of the week. Now, this is different. Pluto is not about limitation the way that Saturn is. Pluto is about diving deep, is about allowing yourself to go to the depths of emotion, to go to the depths of your own heart and what it is that you believe is going to allow your heart to feel fulfilled and where it is that perhaps we have settled for superficial allowances we have allowed ourselves to distract ourselves from truly authentic love, authentic self-respect, and authentic and clear sense of understanding what really matters at the essence, at the core, and focusing in on that. Where we have become distracted is how much it is that the pull towards presence is going to be. So, on a very you know straightforward level with this energy it may be that we are meeting people interacting with people and feeling that sense of fate pulling us in their direction however with saturn we are going to be asked to take that moment to take that consideration and to ask ourselves if this is what we really want to do where it is that we feel a pull towards uh, certain purchases or uh, certain foods, if you will, right? We are going to ask ourselves, okay, what is it that is right for me, for my longevity, for my overall sense of well-being, right? It is both of these planets that in their own way are much more bigger picture than some other planets may be. And it is these particular connections that are going to ask us to go in deeper to say what is it that i'm really wanting what is it that i'm really craving and it is in that space that we reach truth the truth of what our heart desires and you may be surprised it is never i've never seen somebody in their heart desire what is ultimately superficial or earthly it is always some deeper spiritual connection it is Scott M. Peck that has talked about, and Scott M. Peck wrote this huge bestseller way, way back in the day called The Road Less Traveled. I loved this book. I read this book so many times over the years because I loved it so much. And he talks about the importance of human connection, the importance of meeting a deeper need that we have for purpose and in his follow-up book further along the road less traveled he talked about the need to connect with spirit the desire for bliss that we have as human beings but bliss can be found in the earthly experience it can be found right now in this incarnation and with the body this was a, a huge distinction for me that i found which led to my book the body and the cosmos this idea of our spiritual interconnection with our physical environment. And this is such an innate part of the human beingness. Now Mars as well has a strong uh, physicality to it as well. It represents our own energy and our self-containment as part of um, our physical being. And so if you think about it, where it is that we are allowing thoughts to reign, right? The Gemini full moon, that is where we get ourselves into a place of some uncertainty or some confusion. But where it is that we are grounding the energy, whether it is in the foundation of Saturn and Venus, or whether it is within the passion and beingness of Mars connecting in supreme harmony with Neptune, well, all of that does suggest that we can find an authentic spiritual expression and true inspiration if we allow ourselves to connect on a deeper level and ultimately to find that right balance. Venus, yes, connecting with Pluto, connecting with Saturn. For a lot of people out there, this is gonna be a big week in the context of love kind of make or break energy that a lot of people are gonna be feeling. And so it is important to be patient with other people because at the same time, there's gonna be conflicting information and mixed messages thanks to that full moon. And so if it is that you are feeling something 
And it might feel uncomfortable to realize, you know, where you actually are with another person or where you actually are in terms of yourself and the value and love that you give yourself. Know that if you and if we allow ourselves to uh, go to the space where we feel we have to communicate that, we might end up giving mixed messages or receiving mixed messages as well. But where it is that we trust the process, allow ourselves to feel and know that a journey to the core of the truth of what is right for us, and it really has nothing to do with anyone else, even if it's playing out within a romantic situation or otherwise, it is ultimately about what is happening with us and what is right for us in this next stage of our lives, in this next decade that we are about to enter. Well, allow yourself to be still and allow yourself to know that sometimes it's okay not to know. It's okay not to have the right answer, but to just feel and to be. Well, that will get us to the right place and the right answers for us. What I love about this week for us, well, look, I am going to say Mars speaking in supreme harmony with Neptune. Both planets are in their home signs. Now that is powerful. It is Mars that is the ancient ruling planet of Scorpio. And Neptune is the modern ruling planet of Pisces. These two planets speaking in this way means that on some level, whether it is emotional, which is the water energy playing out here, whether it is on the energy of the psyche, on the energy of the spirit, or on the energy of what's playing out in our lives, there is something that is truly magical that is happening right now. And that magic is change. It is a shift. And I think that a lot of us know on a deep level that we are gearing up for a fresh new start that is literally right around the corner. Right around Christmas Day, we've got a very important solar eclipse set to take place, which is conjunct Jupiter. Big luck, big changes are gonna open up in a snap and they'll start to reveal themselves to us at the very beginning of next week with Jupiter trine Uranus, a rare alignment and a very special alignment at that. But it is ultimately part of a larger journey, of course. And this journey that we call life is one of constant unfolding, of constant revealing. And ultimately what we're doing is revealing ourselves to ourselves more honestly and authentically than we knew before. Now I have some really big announcements I'm so excited to share with you. But first, let me just say, what do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week, all these aspects speak to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more all of this in the superstar space i look forward to meeting you there and now really lovely announcements more announcements are going to come please make sure that you are on my newsletter list because i have really big things that i am set to share but i want to give you guys a little bit of a preview now my really big news that i'm so very excited to share with you of course you know my book the body and the cosmos uh, is now, well, December 9 is officially uh, live and online at booksellers everywhere, and you can get that online. The Body and the Cosmos, thank you so much to everybody who pre-ordered a copy through Amazon. Thank you so much to everybody who ordered an advanced copy directly from me. I appreciate you so, so very much. And so here it is, The Body and the Cosmos. It is now to the world, of the world, that's it. I release it and I let it go, and I hope you absolutely love it. And now my other really, really, really big news, surprising news here, I've just been waiting to announce it and share it with you guys. And that is, if you can believe it, another book. Yes, my next book, I'm so very excited about this. And this is a book that I have dreamed of for so, so very long. Uh, this is a draft copy. We have an updated cover, but it's still gonna change right now. But it is called Prayers to the Sky. 
And this is uh, so deeply meaningful to me. Prayers to the sky, yay! To know and to love the astrological planets more deeply. And uh, this is something that I have dreamed of doing for such a long time. I really wanted to put together a book that had stories and myth, but also helped you to cultivate a personal relationship to the sky. Uh, to understand what it means to have a conversation with these parts of yourself as represented by the planets, part of our higher self, if you will. And so to have a book of prayers, that was something that was always a dream of mine. Um, and really, this is something that is not uh, religious. It is about you communicating in new ways with your own natal chart or with the sky as it is right now. It's not exactly astrological magic. There's a little bit that is shared of some of the philosophical things that I did share in my astrological magic class, but it is more about wherever you are right now, um, cultivating astrology as a spiritual practice and understanding that when you create an emotional connection to the planets, you, um, you move towards being a better astrologer, but also you move towards knowing yourself as a complex and beautiful expression of divine energy that you are, that I believe we are. And so this book helps me to affirm that in the world. I'm very emotional right now. Um, this has meant a lot to me and I have been very, very inspired lately when I saw the amazing feedback and love and how much it has meant to people to read the body and the cosmos and all the amazing feedback I got from the advanced copy. It just gave me that much more inspiration and motivation to keep going with writing this book, Prayers to the Sky. So this is the draft copy that I have here, um, but I'm gonna put up the, uh, the cover it's not the final cover but this is the tentative cover so far i'm working with the artist right now and of course i am going to have advanced copies of this book available um so you know i'm very interested in offering new perspectives like i feel if you know all the information is already out there then that's one thing you can go and get that information but where it is that i feel i have something unique to offer um, that's where I'm especially awakened. I'm especially interested in pursuing. And I believe that I've done that with my first two books and I believe I've done that with this. So in my very first book, Astrology Realized, I emphasized the historical and philosophical development of astrology, which was something I hadn't really seen in uh, you know, astrology books for, for everybody, like introductory astrology books in that way. And so that's what I felt made it different. And with the body and the cosmos, the way I connected the ideas of Plato to the astrological sky was uniquely my own perspective. And uh, also this importance of meditation, the importance of knowing yourself as a spiritual being is what motivated the body and the cosmos to know every part of you, every muscle, uh, every feeling as an, a spiritual being Ness in one was what motivated the body and the cosmos. And so now prayers to the sky. This is very exciting to me. This is motivated by uh, my desire to affirm astrology as a spiritual practice. And my belief that when you cultivate a relationship all your own, a unique relationship to the astrological planets, to the astrological sky, it can only make your life better. It can only enrich your self-trust, your self-knowing, and it is ultimately the great gift that astrology, I believe, can offer some of us. I know that everybody comes to astrology for different reasons. We all have our own motivations, but for me, it is a deeply spiritual practice and an act of self-trust. And I hope that this book takes you on that journey as well. And you can read the individual chapters in terms of the different planets. And there's like a myth or two for each of the planets, little stories. And then there are specific prayers as well. And again, they're just a starting point. It is ultimately about you having your own conversation. So, Advanced copies should be up for sale now on my website as I publish this video. And it is 
the advanced copies that are going to come with free gifts as well. So you'll get a signed copy. You'll be one of the very first people to get a signed copy of the final book, Prayers to the Sky. And you will get a table of correspondences that actually list out, and this is something that we touched on again in the Astrological Magic classes, about how each of the planets corresponds to different herbs and different colors and different candles and different stones and things like that. So I've put it together in a chart, and so I will share that with you in the near future. If you're on my newsletter list, you'll get that right away. And my email list, you can sign up to that on the homepage of my website at the bottom there. And um, there's also going to be only for the people who either uh, purchase the advanced book or who purchase a class pass. Uh, and there's going to be a class pass that costs $60. And it's basically us getting together um, every single month for a year. And we will actually, first of all, I'll answer any questions you have, but we'll actually go through each of the chapters. So it's like for the sun, we together online will gather and we'll do a, a ritual, a small ritual of prayer for the sun. We'll explore some of the myths. So it's kind of like a study group, but it's also to show you because I remember in Astrological Magic, which was a very popular series of classes that I did recently, um, the one thing that people asked for a lot was they wanted to see how it is that I like to engage the sky magically. And um, that's what we're going to do together. That's what I'm going to show you how I do it. So we'll do that together. So for those who don't get the advanced copy, you can purchase a class pass. I am going to officially publish this book March 15. That is the tentative date when it will be available widely online uh, and be out there in the world forever and ever. Um, but the people who purchase the pre-orders directly through Amazon, there's going to be some other offering that I have uh, for those people. It's not going to be the class pass. That is going to be for either advanced book people uh, who get the signed copy of the book or if you get a class pass. So I think that we'll have a lot of fun. If you can join us live, that's great. If you can't, you'll get the download as well that you can learn from infinitely. And I think we're going to go on a journey together, a spiritual journey together. Um, and understanding these parts of ourselves in new ways, which is the planets in our own chart and in the sky now. So prayers to the sky. I hope you guys really, really love it. And it means so much to me. It means so much to me to have your trust and your love. And, it, you know, it's moments like this. I do get kind of emotional because it feels like a milestone, like this day is a milestone. One of my books became widely available, published, and the next book is already pretty much ready. I mean, I'm still doing stuff and it's about to go to the editor, but it goes to the printer for the advanced copies a week into January. So it's going to be available advanced copy sales now and till the end of December. Then I'll have a final count and I'll be able to send that order off to the printer. And then I'll be going to Canada so that I can personally prepare the packages and ship them off to you guys. So again, I hope you absolutely love it. And I'll keep talking about it. But yeah, that information is on my website now. The other big announcement I did want to make, and I have a lot of announcements coming up in these days while the moon is in Taurus. Uh, and I spoke about this in the electional astrology class. So those of you who are there, they, you know why I'm doing this. Um, but the other big announcement I really wanted to make was, well, there's more than one, but I have a couple. One is a big raffle. I've mentioned it before a little bit, but I'm going to be doing a huge charity raffle where we are going to be raising money for one specific charity. And that particular money that is raised uh, is going to go directly to them before the year is over. And lots and lots of prizes. I think there's like 50 prizes available. Lots of incredible astrologers have donated readings. Uh, people with spiritual businesses have donated products. And I appreciate each and every one of you who's donated so much. 
I will be sharing in newsletters and things uh, who these amazing people are every single day that prizes are given out. Uh, so I hope that you acknowledge them and see them and follow them online. And um, of course, I thank them so much for their generosity, but it really is about raising money. So raffle tickets are gonna be as low as $1. So just $1 gets you on this raffle. The sooner you get on the raffle, which will be ready in the next day or two, but as soon as you get on the raffle, it means that uh, because we'll start having the, the, the uh, prizes given out pretty soon, uh, the sooner you're on it, the more likely you are to win something, which is great. And if you don't win anything, that's okay too, because the money goes to charity. And the money is gonna to go to one of my very favorite charities that I personally donate to every single month. Um, and that is an organization called bestfriends.org. And the reason I love this organization, and again, I'm already emotional because of my book, but I'm gonna get emotional with this as well, because what I love about this organization is that they specialize in uh, rehabilitating and rehoming animals who have gone through uh, severe trauma. So whether it's physical trauma, emotional trauma, a lot of the animals who end up there uh, have been abused very badly. And to see the recovery of these animals, to see them able to love again, uh, to me it just gives me so much hope that no matter what it is you've been through, no matter how painful it is, you can love again and you can know love again. And that is what I love about this organization is that I believe they affirm that in the world. And so I hope that you will uh, be part of this. I hope that you will help me raise money. As I said, all the money I raise is going to charity. My assistant has put in so much time and hours into this. I'm covering those hours. Uh, PayPal fees I will cover as well. And I will donate even more of my money as well to make sure that it's a good amount. Uh, I will add, I will top up something uh, for this particular donation. But again, this is an organization that I don donate to every single month. So I hope that you will join me and have a chance to win amazing prizes from really incredible astrologers and other people who have donated. I appreciate the donations. Uh, I appreciate people buying raffle tickets, all of that so much. And this really is about giving, which is why it matters to me so much. Now I want to share some incredible new events that I have to share that is really very, very exciting. So one of the very first announcements I want to make is about an event called Starstruck. And this is an event with the incredible Astro Twins, the very famous Astro Twins. I actually had the privilege of uh, interviewing Ophi of the Astro Twins, one half of the Astro Twins, and they're putting on this uh, huge online event. And so you can actually attend my talk for free uh, by going on the link in the description below where I'll be talking about how in the 2020s, how the energy is gonna change and all these new thoughts I've had since I did the Decade Ahead video. So we're gonna have a lot of fun together uh, recording this and there are tons of other talks taking place. Uh, that are pre-recorded, so you can listen to them in your own time. And the great thing is, is that they've made it really affordable if you choose to purchase additional talks. But if you want, you can join my talk completely for free. And again, links are in the description below. The amazing event is called Starstruck, and I hope that you guys absolutely love that as well. And of course, there's other events as well that I'm doing. I will be in South Florida, uh, January 11 with the NCGR group. I will be having a free book launch party for the body and the cosmos. So I hope that you'll join me. And then after that, there's a talk and a workshop as well. You can stay for one or the other or both or none if you like, whatever you like. I will be there uh, taking selfies, signing books, uh, and I look forward uh, to meeting you there. And then I'll be jumping on a cruise. Thank you to the last minute signups, but yes, I'm gonna be on a cruise my very first cruise of my life, love, joy, hope, and transformation. We're gonna have an amazing, fun experience together. Um, you know, like-minded people call together and just enjoying themselves on a ship. There's some seminars as well. There's excursions as well. All of that is on offer. And then in 2020, there are even more events. So I'm gonna invite you to go to the events page on my website, and that'll give you more info about the events I have coming up. And of course, Synchronicity University is coming up as well. The winter session starts in January. Also, 
Um, and that starts the last weekend in January and we'll be together for six weeks. We'll be learning all kinds of wonderful things, more about Pluto, more about Jupiter, learning about Venus in the astrology chart, uh, learning about chart rulerships and lunar mansions, which will be a lot of fun also. My incredible friend, Katie Weber, uh, every year she comes out with the success pack. I swear by this success pack. I think that she is really, a, I've met so many people out there in this world of uh, whether you want to call it new age or alternative spiritualities. And uh, she does feng shui like no one else. She really is one of the very best that I've ever known. I started as her client and uh, now I'm her friend. And so I love sharing her work with you guys. So please click on the link below and uh, check out that uh, success pack that is on offer. I think there's a reduced rate uh, until we get to the end of the month. So you might want to have a look at that. I, I'm always one of the very first to buy the success pack. I swear by this. I absolutely love it. And Katie Weber is the real deal. She's so amazing and so good at what she does. So I hope that you enjoy that as well. And with that, I think I will close. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm filled with gratitude. Look, Biggie joined us. Little Biggie joined us. Let me just move this camera a little bit. Hi, Biggie. Hi. I'm going to leave that in the video. So I sometimes just let him jump there and I just don't say anything. But I want to have him more in my videos. So I'm going to figure that out. Maybe I'll redecorate. He's hiding his face right now, right? Okay, that's okay, Biggie. You're allowed. You're allowed. Prayers to the sky. It's a dream come true. It's a dream come true to share uh, a book of prayers and a book of some myth and, and just to ultimately affirm a sky that you're connected to that is wise and loving and I truly do believe that we are an expression of the sacred and this book affirms that and so I hope you love it and I'll be here I'll keep talking about it and yes be on the lookout more announcements coming in the next couple of days while the moon is in Taurus and thank you thank you so much thank you for being here I'm filled with gratitude right now and I appreciate each and every one of you, thank you for watching. Okay, it'll be a great week. Enjoy.